Hey everyone, Elisa with Jots Designs, and in this video, it's a follow-up to my last one where I did these alcohol ink ripple coaster sets, and I'm going to show you how I clean up the sides, or basically paint the sides with the Sharpie poster paint marker, and then I'm going to seal them and coat them in resin. So this marker, it's um, silver, it's brand new. I'll show you how I start that going um, and get the paint up there um, into the felt part of the marker there. And basically I can just grab a piece of paper and you push down the tip. And you're gonna do that several times. And I recommend not going too fast or anything, just go slow because you can end up with paint everywhere. Um, but basically just keep going until you start seeing the paint and the paint actually comes out on the paper. Um, it may not coat the entire tip of the marker just yet, but it will as it, as you continue to use it. So basically just like any marker, you paint the sides with that and make sure you get your corners and, um, there's the bumps that are in these tiles. So I like to flip them over and just make sure I, um, kind of paint the underneath side as well because it just kind of finishes it off and cleans it up nicely. Um, I've also noticed with those bumps, sometimes the coating will get just on the top of the bump, so it's a little bit um, harder for some paints to stick to, so just be aware of that. So I'm just going through. I noticed with the dark purple, it bled just a little bit. So um, after I was done doing all sides on the four coasters. I waited about 10 minutes and let it dry. And then I went back and did a second coat on everything just to make sure I finally got everything coated and you couldn't see any of the colors through it. And then I took it outside to seal it and I'm gonna use this Krylon UV resistant clear spray. It's a matte um, and it's an acrylic coating. And you definitely want to start with a um, very light coat because otherwise you can move the ink. And um, I forgot that. And on that first tile, it kind of muted the purple just a little bit, um, but didn't mess up too much. I still had it light enough um, when it hit the tile. So we were good with that. And I do recommend doing um, two coats of it and you're good to go. Um, so for the resin, I'm going to be using this ClearCast 7050, and I got this from the Epoxy Resin Store. There's links um, below for them and coupon code as well. And this resin is a, um, it's a two-part epoxy resin, and it's two-to-one ratio. So two parts resin, one part hardener. And the nice thing with this resin is that it can be done either by weight or volume, two to one, you're good to go. Um, this little silicone cup I'm using, it came as a basting brush set and I just chopped off the top to use it for measuring resin. Works great. Um, you always wanna make sure that you pour in your hardener first and then you're gonna be pouring the resin into the hardener um, and then mix that up. So. Just starting with the hardener here, got it uh, weighted. Basically, I had it at 19.1 is what it dripped out to. Um, and then I just cleared the scale and multiplied the 19 uh, twice. And that's what I'm going to pour the resin at. And most resins are thicker than the hardeners are. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're pouring. Sometimes I've gone and tried to pour the hardener and it came out really fast because I wasn't thinking about it and it was super thin or the resin just took forever because it's a it's definitely a thicker product so I just got that weight out and I went up to about 38 and then got the little bit drip so 38.3 from 19.1 I figured that was good um I like to wipe off the top of the bottles just to make sure the lids aren't sticky next time or anything and I'm using this paint knife to mix it. You want to stir it. You don't want to whip it or anything because you'll create more bubbles. And using a plastic piece like this or silicone also helps create less bubbles too. I've noticed if you use um, wood sticks like popsicle sticks or tongue depressors, you can actually create more bubbles um, just from the wood. Okay, so I'm basically just pouring a little bit in the center of each one here. This is a pretty thin resin, so it spreads nicely. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was coated before I 
really got anything flowing over the edges too much. Um, so I started spreading it out with the paint knife and then I just decided my hands are just as good. So, and you can actually feel things better, especially the edges, um, cause you want to make sure you coat the edges nicely as well and make sure that they're smooth and, um, you'll, you'll be able to feel that. So I just get everything nice and coated and then I'll, um, pop the bubbles and I added just a little bit more resin to the center. You'll see here in a minute too. And then spread that around, pop the bubbles again. And then I actually moved them to my curing rack, which I have a mosquito net around to help with the dust and particles um, and hair and such. And um, you can also use food tents um, to cover them and um, prevent dust and bugs and everything getting in them. And I'll include links below for that too. So don't forget, links are all below. Um, check out my website, jotsdesigns.com. There's links for um, supporting my channel if you would like to do that. And don't forget to check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. See you guys later.